One of the world's classic cities, Paris seemingly has it all. Art, fashion, romance. One thing it doesn't have, though, is the most prestigious trophy in European club football. But in 2020, they came close, so close, to completing their nine-year-long mission. You could be forgiven for thinking Paris Saint-Germain's history began in 2011, when Qatar Sports Investments, led by Nasser al khalafi bought a controlling stake in the club. To a large extent, it's effectively the case. With all the respect, what happened before that, I think the club was born the, the day that the Qatari took over this club. So it's a totally new project. But in truth, the PSG the world knows today is the result of another group of businessmen, decades earlier, wanting a football power in the French capital. PSG was formed in 1970, when the newly formed Paris FC was merged with Ligue 2's Stade Saint-Germain. Based 15 kilometers west of the capital in Saint-Germain-en-Laye. But Paris FC broke away two years later and kept the club's top flight status. Fashion designer Daniel Hector came in and saved PSG, who were relegated to the third division after the split, leading them back to the top tier in 1974. He also designed the club's uniform and variations on his classic design form the modern kit. And though Hector left in disgrace, banned for life by the FFF after a ticketing scandal, he had laid the foundation for PSG's early success. Their first league title came in 1986, with another coming in 1994, and they won eight Coupe de France and even a continental trophy with the 96 UEFA Cup Winners' Cup in the years before QSI's takeover. But for a city the size of Paris, just two league titles was disappointing. Across Europe's other football powerhouses, we'll ignore Berlin. But Madrid was known around the world for Real's plethora of trophies. Roma and Lazio carried prestige in Italy's capital. And London has not won, not two, not three, but at least four clubs known the world over. PSG were merely known as the underachievers of French football. Having fielded players the ilk of David Ginola, the 1993 French Player of the Year, George Ware, who won the 1995 Ballon d'Or, and Ronaldinho, who emerged as a star in his time with PSG. QSI's 2011 takeover, however, saw them shake off that underachiever tag, at least domestically, and French football would never be the same, as PSG spent huge sums of money to lure talent to the capital. Javier Pastore was the first headline acquisition at 42 million euros. But the power shift truly became clear with the combined 63 million euro capture of Milan duo Thiago Silva and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Paris Saint-Germain wants to be one of the best teams in Europe, so uh, for this reason I think that uh, to reach the high level in football in Europe you have to spend money, you have to do investment. It's common knowledge that QSI's spree has surpassed a billion, spending 64.5 million on Edison Cavani in 2013, there was David Luiz for 49.5 million in 2014, and Angel Di Maria in 2015 for 63 million. It polarized opinion within the game and in French society. Well, it's uh, it's it's good for for the Liga and for the Champions League. I think it's going to make uh, for us the Champions League probably even more more difficult and more interesting for everybody. These sums are astronomical. They are unreasonable. They reflect what we dislike in football. That being the absence of any regulations, deficits piling up on European budgets. Of course, the signings had the desired effect. PSG broke a 19-year drought with the Ligue 1 Championship in 2013, 
the first in a string of titles that firmly established them not just as French football's leading club, but streets ahead of the competition. One club is above the others, that is Paris Saint-Germain. They have more money, great players, and they will probably buy new players. The other French clubs are suffering. But PSG were never satisfied. And after their Ligue 1 superiority was challenged by Monaco taking the title in 2017, they raised the bar even further and took their spending power to another level. Some said it was out of this world. Yes, as pricey as Louise, Cavani and Di Maria had been, with the Champions League in their crosshairs came the Neymar move in 2017 for 222 million euros, smashing the transfer record. Kylian Mbappe joined that year too. Sure, it was on loan at first, but a year later, it was for 180 million euros, smashing the transfer record for a teenager. We are crazy. We finally have our three-striker connection. We can do amazing things in the Champions League. PSG will be in the world's top four clubs, not European top four, world top four. PSG will grow and will enter another dimension. He is the player that we needed to go further in the Champions League. Those guys had every right to be optimistic. And they were, of course, proved right. Eventually, anyway. PSG recaptured the Ligue 1 title that year and swept the domestic cups for the fourth year in a row, but were knocked out of the Champions League in the round of 16 that season and the following season. And let's face it, even the success of making the Champions League final in 2020 has an asterisk next to it. With UEFA changing the rules of the game in order to complete the season, replacing home and away two-legged affairs to a one-match knockout at a neutral venue. Which you have to say, favoured Les Parisiens. Having been knocked out off the back of poor second-leg showings in three of the four previous years. Of course, such things hardly made their defeat to Bayern Munich in the final hurt any less. It's always the worst feeling in the world to lose a final like that. Hence the rioting along the Champs-Élysées in the aftermath. No, 2020 wasn't their year. But having finally made it to the final showpiece, it showed what Zlatan Ibrahimović said when he left in 2016 to be truth. With time, what the Qatari is investing in this, it's no limits. Trust me, they will hunt. They will hunt this Champions League until they get it. And they will not stop. With me or without me. Thanks for watching. For more great content on all things football, make sure you hit the subscribe button.